Chelsea of Knitting Tipsy, and this is episode three of Show Us Your Knits. Show Us Your Knits is the series where I play show and tell with my finished objects, and I give you a look at the current works in progress that maybe have carried over from the month or new things that I'm about to cast on for this month. If you've been here before, hi darling, welcome back. And if you're new here, cheers. Welcome, babe. Go ahead and grab a cocktail, a mocktail, and a project to work on, and let's get started. Okay, so last month when we talked, I had let y'all know that I was going to have significantly less whips for the month of March, uh, mainly because I was trying to complete both of them. I was going to be starting <laughs> and wrapping them up in the month of March, and they were two really big projects. I am really freaking proud of myself to say that I did it. It was a little stressful at times, but I did um, succeed in that endeavor. The two projects were my St. Patty's Day outfit and my anniversary dress. So let's start with St. Patty's Day since it happened earlier in the month. I am such a theme girly. Like I love a good theme. I love an event or a holiday that I can work towards creating something for for that just it, it makes me so happy to do that i've done valentine's day projects i've done projects based on um books and for events dealing with books i've made birthday outfits i've made christmas outfits i i really enjoy a good themed project so i got into my head that i wanted to make something for saint patrick's day this was a terrible decision <laughs> I had just wrapped up a Valentine's Day outfit not very long ago. My mental health was in the tank and I don't know, I just was like, no, I wanna make something for St. Patrick's Day. And I know I'm eye rolling. I'm actually really glad that I did it. It all worked out, but sometimes I just wish I could like tell myself, slow down, slow your roll, like take a breath. I am very impulsive sometimes in my decisions. When I get an idea in my head, I just want to go, go, go without thinking it through all the time. But hindsight is 2020. I did what I did and <laughs> we're here to talk about it. So at first I was going to be real crazy and I was going to attempt to make a brand new design from scratch. I have like a little design portfolio where I have all of these ideas that I wanna make. There are, I don't know if hun hundreds might be an exaggeration, but there are a lot of designs that I'd like to attempt to make in the future at some point. So um, my beautiful friend, Andrea of Tropical Yarny, she was advertising, sneaky peeking her St. Patty's colorway at like, mid end of February and it was just so pretty. It was beachy yet it was St. Patrick's Day -y, and I had to have it and I thought well I will design something based on it and maybe she and I can do a collaboration with this. It'll be really fun because I'm gonna finish it by St. Patty's Day. I'll be posting like some behind the scenes stuff and it'll be great. <laughs> Well, she is amazing. And she's like, oh my God, that sounds fabulous. So she sent me the yarn. Well, she, we decided to do the collaboration and she was working on getting the yarn ready. And that's when I kind of took a breath and I was like, this is going to be so stressful trying to design something brand new. And I also wanted to start working on my Les Olas crochet set, my Valentine's Day outfit here. I'm going to pop in a picture because I keep talking about it. This is the Les Olas crochet set. I'm obsessed with it. It is my newest design and I really got so much great feedback that I decided I wanted to turn it into my first ever YouTube tutorial. But I was, yeah, I wanted to do all of this at the same time. So when I really thought about it, I thought, what if I combine those two and I use Andrea's yarn to create my second sample of the Les Olas crochet set. It'll be my St. Patty's Day outfit. I don't mind having multiple of my design. I always have, we should say it. It's not that I don't mind. I always have multiple of my own designs because I have to test it that many times. <laughs> I make little tweaks, I figure things out. I get nervous to send something to test her. So sometimes I'll have the pattern all written up and I'll make another one following my own pattern so that I'm not wasting my tester's time because perfectionist, well, recovering perfectionist. Anyways, so I thought this will be great and I can film the tutorial as I'm making the St. Patty's Day outfit. 
that was also kind of um, a, a poor life choice because I really put pressure on myself. I had maybe two and a half weeks to make my St. Patty's Day outfit, which it is a full skirt and top, and then also film and instruct and all of these things. We'll just say the top went really well. <laughs> The top was amazing. The tutorial is, well, it's not edited, but like it's all filmed. I think it's going to be great for the top. The skirt, it came back to me as I was making my, my St. Patty's Day sample that there were some issues that I had encountered in the skirt. And because it was just for me, it was just a me project. I wasn't planning at that point to turn it into a pattern. I just fixed it, you know? If you're if you're a knitter or crocheter and you understand, you can just kind of like, oh, I'm just going to fudge that. And it looks great. And nobody can tell but you know that maybe you did some some interesting things to make to make it work. And it's not even like they were flaws. Like I don't there's no imperfections. And even if there were in the skirt, it's just if I were going to write a pattern, it's like, why am I doing? Eh, fuck it. Let's just figure it out. So that's what I did in the red one, and it all came back to me as I was filming the St. Patty's Day sample. And I was getting so frustrated because I would think I'd figured it out, and I'm on camera explaining, and I'd be like, fuck, why doesn't that work? So I'm still not sure if the issue with the skirt was my poor mental health, like the brain fog, the deadline, all of these things. And I was just so flustered that that's why there was an issue. And maybe it's it's something so simple that I just couldn't see. Or if it's a design thing that I need to learn about and to figure out. We're going to find out soon because I will be tackling that in a little bit. But at the time, I decided, you know what? I'm just going to make the skirt for myself and just enjoy it and just have it with me to work on because the actual making of it is wonderful. This let me actually pull it out. I'm just gabbing and gabbing and gabbing about it and haven't even showed you. Let's go ahead and pop in a picture of the finished St. Patty's Day. And now let me show you it up close. This is Tropical Yarny St. Patty's Day colorway. It is a tensile DK, 100% tensile, weight three, DK weight, four ply, and you get 246 yards per skein. It is just, it's like such soft shamrock, like a mint shamrock shake from McDonald's. And I love that the light here, let me actually turn it down a little maybe. Yeah, there is this gorgeous sheen that you get with tensile and Andrea, it's, it's just so soft. Andrea did such a great job with it. And you get these little pops of gold and almost like a little tiny bit of like a blue green, kind of oceanic. I just, you can tell why I wanted to snag this yarn and make something with it. But let me show you the stitch that this uses. It's, um, it's a modified take on the wave stitch. Um, I actually found it on a Russian website and translated the stitches for myself to use. But I love this raised um, row that you get by doing back loop double crochets. And it's just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so drapey and beautiful. I absolutely love how it turned out. So I decided to just make that for myself and get it done so that I could wear it because I was I was really struggling, especially around St. Patty's Day. And working on that stitch repeat is really soothing and relaxing. And it was was the perfect, the perfect project to be working on while I sobbed uncontrollably into my sweatshirt. <laughs> it, it turned out beautifully and I'm excited to eventually dive into um, the tutorial. I think, I hope y'all are gonna love it. And once I figure out the issue with the skirt, it really is so simple. Um, it takes some time. I finished mine in three weeks. I don't recommend that. I recommend taking your time. But if you really need to, you can totally finish it in three weeks. The Las Olas Crochet set will be coming soon. It's beautiful, it's beachy. Um, wh whichever yarn you choose to use, if you do a thicker worsted like I used in the Valentine's Day sample, um, or you use more of a 
slinkier DK tensile. It's so comfortable either way, and I hope I hope y'all love it. So I'm gonna, if I need some extra space to pop in more pictures, if I was too gabby, I'm gonna put those in here now. Isn't it gorgeous? It's just gorgeous. <laughs> toot my own horn. Toot, toot. Phone number two. Okay, so I finished that project, the the first faux, the St. Patty's Day outfit, the Les Olas crochet set. I finished it, I think it was March. I, I wove in the final ends the morning of St. Patty's Day, so March 17th. Uh, March 18th, I spent in a hang, hungover anxiety mess, so nothing was worked on that day. And then March 19th is whenever I picked up my next whip. This second whip, I have known I've wanted it to be my anniversary dress since last summer. In August 2023, Lion Brand was having a kit sale, and I saw that one of a Kate had posted a bunch of her designs. I'm very good friends with her. Kate is amazing. And ever since she has released her shoulder shift dress, I have been just so in love with it. It is classy. It is sexy. It's just so beautiful. And it's not my typical style. I don't know if y'all can tell the neckline that I typically like to wear. And it, when I say typically, I mean 99% of the time. But I do love a good sexy shoulder. And it was just so pretty. So I've known I've wanted to make it, make it for a while. And when I, that kit sale popped up, I thought I should make that in white for my anniversary dress. And I got so excited. So I ordered it. It came in. Now... Our anniversary was April 5th of 2024. We actually just got back from celebrating yesterday. And I had plenty of time from August to April. Plenty of time. I actually ended up casting it on in October of 2023. Uh, my wonderful friend Tiffany, she came to visit and I was taking her to my local yarn store. And I think I cast it on while we were sitting there. Cast it on in October. Everything's fine. Here's the thing though, True Boo, which is the yarn that this design uses, this pattern uses, it calls for True Boo or you could use another DK tensil. True Boo's, True Boo's like a really good time. It's like a really fun, sexy time, but it's a liar. It is a liar in so many ways. True Boo is a DK, but really it's masquerading as a DK. I swear that yarn is more like a sport or a fingering whenever you're actually working with it but it's splitty and it's slippy. And I think the finished result makes it all worth it, but it is a little bit of a pain in the ass to work with. And when I saw the hook size, <laughs> Kate, Kate, you are amazing. I don't know how you did it. I think she used a B hook with the Truba yarn. And I, try, I, I just, I was like, there's no, absolutely no way. There's no way I'm gonna be using a B hook. So I, kept fiddling with things and I finally got to a an e-hook an e-hook that's what I felt comfortable using I created a swatch I really liked the fabric that I was creating but I knew this was going to mean because I'm using such a different gauge I'm gonna have to do some maths to figure out the same dimensions for the dress using my gauge luckily or what should have been luckily. <laughs> this pattern is so beginner friendly. If you're a crocheter and you want to make this dress, I highly recommend it. You make a rectangle and then you seam it. I know, <laughs> it's so clever. Kate did amazing with this. But yeah, you're just crocheting a rectangle. Somehow, even though it was just a rectangle and I really do know how to cross multiply and you'd think I could have figured this out, Somewhere along the way, I didn't account for, I didn't account for <laughs> my my tits and my ass, to be quite honest. I also didn't account for, Trubu usually grows, if you've cast on and you're working up, it grows a lot in length and somewhat in width. But the way that this dress is created, your length is super long because it's it's the part that's measured from like your legs over your shoulder and down that's your cast on, that's your length. And then the width is how far it's going across your body. So in my head, I was thinking, oh, but it's gonna stretch a lot. 
whenever it, like for the length of it, I thought it's gonna stretch so much, but that's actually the width, if you get what I mean. Like I thought it would be longer when I block it, but actually it was gonna block and be stretchiest the width. <laughs> I'm probably doing a really shit-tastic job of explaining this. I screwed up and I ended up creating something that I think would have maybe fit a person that is eight inches shorter than I am. Like maybe if somebody was five foot two, I think this dress would have fit you perfectly. On me, it barely covered the hoo-ha and the, the booty cheeks. So I realized it after getting <laughs> a substantial chunk done. And I, I just, I realized, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I have boobs and butt that this needs to go over lengthwise. I am not, I am myself not a rectangle. I have curves. So um, after talking with some of my amazing Kofi members and cracking up, oh, we cackled. Uh, I decided to frog the whole thing in March, whenever my wedding anniversary was April 5th. <laughs> But I believed in me. I said, I was like, you know what? I know it's crazy, but I think I can do it. So I frogged the whole thing and I added 19 extra inches. Yes, that is how off I was on my measurements. Um, I added 19 extra inches so that the length of the dress was 90 inches long. It was close to 500 stitches. Well, it was a lot of stitches. So worth it, so worth it because of how it fits. So I worked furiously on that um, and it is just half double crochet all day. And it quickly, I started to realize that if I wanted this dress to have the same ease that Kate's dress does, the design, the intended fit of the design is 10 inches of positive ease, I wasn't gonna make it. There, I just would not be able to finish in time for our anniversary. So I started considering what would it look like with neutral ease? What would it look like with negative ease? Because again, I'm not, not everything is the same measurement. So I knew somewhere along the way there was gonna be some negative ease in this dress. I'm so glad I did it. I am so glad that I went with a dress with negative ease because I just think it's so sexy. I think it's so sexy and pretty. And I did struggle at first, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, because it's not my normal neckline. And I was like, I don't know if I feel beautiful in this. I think the dress is objectively beautiful, but I don't know if I feel beautiful. And my husband really encouraged me. He thought I looked really nice in it. Um, I Marco Poloed some of my friends. I sent some pictures to some friends to get that outside perspective that I was really struggling internally to validate myself that I looked pretty. Um, but yeah, they all, they all helped me out. And once I did my hair and makeup, oh my God, it's like, it's one of my favorite things I've ever made. It's just so good. It's classy and sexy. So I did mod it a little bit, like I said. Um, it has, let me look at my notes here. I did two inches of negative ease in the bust, which made, and because again, it's a rectangle, which gave me six inches of negative ease in the hips and the booty. I also added some slits to the dress that um, are not part of the pattern, but I've seen a couple other people, um, I think her testers or other people who have made the dress have added slits. When I had the dress flat, I created the slits so that they were the exact same height. But as the dress kind of drapes over your shoulder, you get a slight kind of diagonal to it. One of the slits ended up being higher than the others. And I wasn't sure at first if I liked it. But again, my, my husband really deserves an award for all of his uh, helping me with my fashion. He really, he, I think he enjoys it, so. But he's like, I really can't even tell and I just think they look good. I'm like, you know what, they do look good. And that asymmetrical was kind of fun. And I did the same thing with the, uh, the armholes. The side that your head and body pop out of, I made that one a little deeper because I wanted some side boob to show, you know, just make it even a little sexier. My two, my two holes were different sizes. <laughs> they were different lengths for the armholes. And that made it really easy for me to, when I would like hold it up to know which side my head and 
arm were going out of and then the drape would go over this arm. But yeah, it just, it turned out beautifully. Again, I finished that dress April 3rd, April 2nd, because I steam blocked it. We could get into a whole discussion. I know whenever I told some people that I had steam blocked my true boo, they were like, Ugh! but I've always steam blocked true boo. I love what it does to the yarn. Maybe that's not right. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be right. It just has to be how I like it. And the same goes for you. You don't have to do what other people say you're supposed to do. If you like what you're creating, that's all that matters. But I did. I steam blocked it and wove in the ends on April 3rd and we left on April 4th. So I was really cutting it close on this one. That's okay. It all worked out. And if I didn't yet, I'm going to pop in just a couple more pictures, I guess. Uh, my husband really liked it. I wore it out in Jupiter uh, Beach. We went to a really cool dinner on the water. Um, oh my God, the food was so good. And I had my wedding jewelry on that I wore back in 2014 when we got married. When we came back to the hotel, we got drinks at the hotel bar. I had some women come up to me and tell me how beautiful my dress was. And I got to do, I was slightly, slightly drunk. I was like, thanks, I made it. <laughs> So much fun. So yeah, I feel like people are sleeping on this pattern by Kate. It's, it is the most beautiful design. It is so easy. It is beginner friendly. Um, yeah, I think everybody should probably make one and then we could all wear them together and get photos. It'll be great. But that is the shoulder shift dress by one of a Kate. Kate, thank you so much for such a gorgeous design. I love you. Time to talk about the whips. All right, y'all, we have made it to the whip portion of this Show Us Your Knits episode because like I said, I only had two finished objects. I hope you can see why they took me quite a long time. When we went on our anniversary trip, I brought some yarn to cast on some new projects. First project I'm gonna show y'all, this is the Tendril Wrap by Montana Crochet. Ashley is, so talented. She's such a warm, kind, beautiful soul. She is just, I love her to pieces. Ashley, if you watch this, I love you so much. And her yarn, it's always so moody and jewel toned and dreamy and just the colors are so vibrant. I think Ashley has some of the most distinctive colors and they are just stunning, stunning. Um, I've, I've bought uh, Ashley's uh, Christmas advents in the past and they have never disappointed. Um, a lot of her colors are based on nature and they're based on life out in Montana. And I saw her blooms collection. They were so springy and so, dare I say beachy, I sent her a message. I was like, girl, I cannot wait to get my hands on this collection. Like, sign me up right now. And she really, really sweetly said, I'm just going to send it to you. So on her gold Stellina sock base, she sent me her Blooms collection. It is just, oh my gosh, it is gorgeous spring flowers, but I, I immediately could picture this on the beach. Like I think this pop of blue and these bright pinks along with like the soft yellows. I could just, I could really see this working up a little bit beachy. And she created a gorgeous wrap design to go with it. And there's something about Ashley's yarn and wraps, especially her patterns with wraps, they are the perfect beach sarongs. I'm gonna pop in a picture here. Um, her aspiration shawl, she actually, she crocheted it and sent it to me during a hard time in my life. And it's like the biggest Ashley hug in the world every time I put it on. It is so beautiful and it works so perfectly as a sarong. So she told me her tendril wrap, she's like, I think it's gonna work really well as a sarong too. So I was sold, I was sold. And I grabbed her yarn, put it in a bag, found the hook size, had the instructions. I'm like, this is gonna be fun. But then I started getting really anxiety over choosing 
how to how to set up the yarn. Um, there's a crochet along that goes along with this pattern that's going on now. And I was looking at other people's posts. I was following the hashtag and people had set up their yarn. And I just, I didn't want to make decisions on my anniversary week. <laughs> I wanted to be decision free. I wanted to be stress free. So what I decided to do and my husband helped me is I had him close his eyes and I twirled the Blooms collection around and he just reached in and pulled one out. And that was the one I started with. This could end up to be a disaster. This could be fucking madness, chaos, might not turn out well, but it's what we're doing. It's what we've decided to do. And I actually really like how it's going so far. So the first colorway he picked was one of the most like saturated, I think, and in more, one of the more autumnal kind of colors because it has this really pretty like, pinky brown, almost like a burgundy, and then you get pops of so many of the other colors. And to be quite honest, this is one of the last colors I probably would have chosen to start with. But it's what Steve picked and I was like, I'm not making choices, let's just go for it. I love the puff stitch that this uh, that this wrap uses and the construction is really fun. Um, you're increasing on one side and decreasing on the other. So you get this like really cool swoop, which is why I think it's gonna look great like tied around your hips. But um, I'm gonna pop in a picture, if I didn't already, of the tendril wrap. So you can kind of see how it's going. This was the first colorway Steve picked and I got to start it on the beach in Jupiter at sunrise. Kind of magical. But I alternated between working on this whip and the other one that I'll show y'all in just a second. And I finished the first color when we were almost home, driving home from the trip. So again, we're at a stoplight and I twirled the, the skeins around and had Steve pick and he picked a color that I don't think I would have picked to go next <laughs> with this yarn. But you know what? I am trusting the process. Probably a bad idea. I don't care though, it's kind of fun. I'm kind of enjoying it, but it is this gorgeous, I think this is my favorite color of the whole section. It is just this seashell pink. I wonder, do I need to turn off the light? Turn it down a little. Mm, I think that's a little better. It is this seashell pink with little pops of like conch pink. I think it is so beautiful. And with that gold Stellina sparkle, it's just, I love it. But um, yeah, together, it's it's a little jarring how they go. But the more I've worked on it and looked at it, I'm like, I don't know. It's kind of fun. So maybe y'all can help me out. Um, you can let me know because I plan on posting this video in just a couple days. So maybe before I get too far on it. Is this a terrible choice? <laughs> like, should I maybe actually come up with a game plan strategy for this shawl? Or do you think it's fun too to just see what the fuck happens as as I randomly have Steven draw my yarn skeins? Tell me, tell me what you think in the comments. But this is the tendril wrap and I am enjoying the hell out of working on it. The second whip that I also cast on at the beach at sunrise, or no, I lied to you. I just lied to y'all. I actually cast this on on the drive down to Jupiter Beach. So this was my project that I started in the car. But this is the Jasper Cardigan by Two of Wands. It's so good. Like that oversized, slouchy, almost like librarian Cardi, but like sexy librarian. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling about this. I purchased this kit through Lion Brand. I'm. This is the last of the Lion Brand kits that I bought last year. Yeah. Um, purchased this kit through Lion Brand back in July and just haven't been ready to cast it on yet. But I was talking with my beautiful friend Whitney of Knitted by Whitney. Uh, she is part of my Kofi group, my Kofi subscribers, and we have a Discord channel that we all chat on. And she was talking about maybe starting a Two of Wands project. And I was like, oh my God, if you do, I have one that I've been wanting to cast on too. And I was like, I'll totally do it with you. So Whitney, if you're out there, I'm not sure if you actually did end up casting it on or not, but I cast mine on. 
I love the brown sample. Like it, it does look very like kind of librarian-esque in the version that Alexi designed, but I am me and I am knitting tipsy and we went with lime fucking green. Yes. One of the reasons I felt this would be a good time to cast on this project, a lot of Two of Wands designs are super beginner friendly. Um, this one I think is classified as like, not your very first project, but like easy. So maybe not super beginner, but like the next level up. I personally feel like this is very beginner friendly having read through it. It is stockinette knit flat. So you are knitting rows and purling rows. And that's pretty much it. You need to know a few, I think just like your regular knit two together and a slip slip knit for decreases, for increases. I don't even know if there are increases on this. I'm trying to think where there would be increases in the design without having it pulled up, but I don't think there are increases. If there are, I'm sure it's a very simple one if I looked at it, but um, even she even has the pockets knit flat and then seamed on and the sleeves are knit flat and seamed on. Now I have knit sleeves flat before and seamed them. Um, I made Alexi's magic hour sweater last year during another bad mental health bout. I'm gonna pop in a picture of it here. It was so enjoyable to make. That one is garter stitch all day. And I followed the instructions to a T because I did not want to do any sort of math for modifications or anything. This was just a kind of pour my emotions into a whip project. And it turned out amazing. Having said that, I do not like knitting sleeves flat. It is just my personal preference. Trying to align seams like three ways, uh, I, don't, I don't care for it. So I will be making some modifications with this pattern. Um, I'm gonna be picking up the sleeves in the round. That will just make it so much happier for me and then I will be able to knit, knit, knit on those sleeves, which I think will make them go faster. The other thing, and I... When I made my magic hour sweater, the gauge is very loose and open and airy. And I think I did end up having to go up a needle size when I made that last year, which was really surprising to me because I'm a very loose knitter. And usually when I make from other people's patterns, I have to go down at least one needle size, sometimes more than that. And when other people make my designs, especially some of my first designs, <laughs> I had most testers going up two to three needle sizes. Now I'm happy to say most testers can either meet my gauge or they go up one to two needle size. Like two is even like sometimes I'm like, oh really, you had to go up two needle sizes, which is fine. We all have different tensions. It's no big deal. That's why we do gauge swatches to make sure that we are matching the designer's gauge. And I'm proud of myself. I did actually gauge, well, like a half-assed gauge swatch. I guess I shouldn't be that proud. <laughs> But I wanted to make sure that I would be using the correct needle size for this. When I made my swatch, I used the needle size that she recommended at first. I think they were US 8s. Is that what I'm using? Yeah, 5.0 millimeter US 8s. Um, and I was really surprised. I was like, I'm going to have to go up a needle size again. I was off by like a stitch, a stitch and a half. Um but I looked at the fabric that I was creating and I was like, I am not gonna like this fabric if I go up another needle, it's gonna be so open. And I looked at her fabric and it didn't look very open. So I'm not sure, I'm sure it's like creating the tension at that hook to get that, or that needle to get that gauge. I don't know what it is, but I just decided, you know what, I'm putting a lot of thought into this whenever it's, again, it's very rectangular. It's meant to be oversized anyways. So I am keeping my off gauge. Um, I'm off, like I said, by a stitch and a half every four inches. And I just decided to make the next size up. <laughs> I might run out of yarn, because like I said, this was a kit from Lion Brand but I think I can still make it work. I think it's gonna be fine. If I have to order more yarn, I will, it's no big deal. I think I even have Lime Brand 24 seven at my local Michaels and I've seen this lime green color before. Trying to match dye lots might be fun. Um, 
but I think I can make it work. I think it'll be okay. So I am making one size up to account for my not meeting gauge. And even if it is more oversized, I think I'm gonna love it. One thing I thought about if I'm going to, if my gauge is gonna be off, what I thought I could do is the lapel, you add that at the end, and then if you see it's kind of like the, the wrist cuffs and the edging on the pockets and the lapel, they're all the same. I thought, oh, I could do a contrast color. Like I could do it in maybe an orange, I think like another bright color or a soft pink, I think could be really cool with this lime green. So I have options. I have options to play around with, but this just stockinette, knitting one row, purling the next is so lovely and so comforting. And I love the fact that I'm going to have a really oversized, comfy um, librarian cardigan to put on. I honestly think I'll probably wear it over top of bikinis. <laughs> I think it's gonna look great over top of my bikinis because I can make anything resort wear. Also with leggings and like, t-shirts or crop tops. I just think this is going to be really Florida cozy. That is whip number two, the Jasper cardigan by Two of Wands. So those are the only two whips that I have actually cast on, but I do plan on making some other things in March. Um, both of these, I won't, I won't be forcing myself to finish them in the Marth in the month of April. I feel like this month so far, I have had projects that I have started and finished within a month, which is amazing, but also not sustainable. And I don't need to do that. I don't need to put these self-imposed deadlines on myself. So both of those two projects are very much um, selfish projects. They are self-care projects. <laughs> Rudy would like to say hi. Steven is bribing the dog with snack snacks right now. <laughs> But like I said, those are going to be my self-care, selfish projects to work on. So maybe they'll get done in the month of April. Maybe they won't. It's no big deal if they don't. There are a few small projects that I would like to finish in April. They're very small and I don't have to finish all of them in April, but they are plushies. I love making plushies. I really do. I don't love making them if they have tons of parts to sew on. I will still do it because they're fucking adorable. But if there are minimal parts to sew on, I just think creating a plushie is so, it's, it's healing to my inner child because my inner child wants to play with them. I used to love stuffed animals. Were you the type of person, I don't know if anybody else did this. I know some people had to have done this, but I had so many stuffed animals and I never wanted them to feel left out or to feel bad. So choosing one or two to sleep with for the night, I felt guilty about the other ones. I, I think it's anthropomorphizing. I, <laughs> like, they all had feelings. I do that with a lot of things that maybe don't have feelings. Maybe they do. I think they do. I would, so I, once my parents tucked me into bed, I would go and grab all my stuffed animals and create like rows of them. And then I would lay on top of them so that they all felt loved. And so none of them felt left out. I loved stuffed animals. Making stuffed animals really still, it, it puts me in that childhood joy state. Um, especially now I love to, if I'm making them for littles or for nieces and nephews, I like to make them just a tiny bit magical and empowering. And I add crystals whenever I'm stuffing them and I set them with good and loving intentions. It's kind of a special project for me and I love doing them. I really have been wanting to make a plushie for myself for a while, so I'm going to do that. And when I say for a while, like months, I have been wanting to make myself a plushie for months. So I have some options for myself. I was thinking either this No So Dragon by Crochet by Jenna. I just, I, there's so many smut books that I read that have dragons in them right now and I love them all. Also, if you were a fan of How to Tame Your Dragon when you were younger, which I don't think I was very young when it first came out. I was at least a teenager, but I thought that movie was so damn cute and toothless in it. So um, I just thought this would be so cute to to make myself a little dragon, to have my, my own little dragon to fight off, you know, the badness in the world. 
also thought the succulent plushies by Knott's Mary Yarn are so fucking good. It's the pink and green combo. I don't know if y'all can tell that I love me a good pink and green combo, but the succulents and the pink like vases, I just, I love it. So that might be in my future. Now I've had these saved for a while, but they, they were sparked in my brain the other day when Steve and I, on our anniversary trip, we went to Loggerhead Marine Life Center and they rehab sea turtles from all around the state of Florida and along the East Coast. I don't know if I remember them saying that they had any from the Gulf Coast, but they have leatherback turtles. There are green turtles. There's a third kind of sea turtle that I can't remember the name of. Um, loggerhead, they're loggerhead turtles. It was so incredible to see these tanks that were just filled with these sea turtles that some of them were sick some of them had been entrapped in fishing like line and wire or trash um, from the ocean some of them had um meetings with sharks that did not go well it was, it was really amazing and i thought of this sea turtle pattern that i had found on Instagram a while back. It's by Passionate Crafter, the Rose and Daisy Turtle Plushies. They are so cute. And I'll have to um, look again if they don't have like the sea turtle fins. I bet I could modify that. But I could figure out a way to turn them into sea turtles. There's also this No So Piggy pattern by Bubba Days Co. <laughs> I think it's just so cute. And one of my friends, uh, Jenny, she is obsessed with pigs. So I actually thought about making us a set of friendship piggies and sending one of them to her. So we'll see one of those or something completely different. Nobody knows. I do want to make for myself, but I am very lucky. So many of my friends are prego right now and are having babies. And when friends have babies, their babies get plushies from me. So if you watched last month's show us your knits. I had made a few plushies for my amazing friend Abby of Goliath Frog Crafts and I delivered those to her house in person. But I have several other friends who have either had babies or are about to have babies and I want to make them some cool things. One of the patterns I've been wanting to try out because it is so I guess it's called the whimsy folks pattern. So it is whimsical. It's also a little bit creepy and I love that. And it's very planty. One of the people I'm making this for is a very planty mama. But these are by Raven Jade Co. I'm just gonna pop in a picture like how fucking cute it is. A little bit creepy, like little plant, little plant creatures, but I love them. Little, little alien babies, so cute. So I'm probably gonna make one of those. And lastly, my absolute favorite pattern to make plushies out of is the Mermaid Lolly pattern by Stitch Sister Co. I've made a ton of these. I'm definitely gonna be making one or two more. So I don't know, I think I have four friends, babies, and then I want to make one and potentially for my other friend. So that is six plushies. I do not expect myself to get all six plushies done in the month of April, um, but I, I wouldn't mind getting maybe like two done. I think two done would be good. And believe it or not, there are three more things that I'm gonna be working on. The next project ha that has not been casted on, but that I'm going to, is a surprise. It's actually not a surprise. I'm just creating a different series to talk about it. I have a whole list of patterns and designs that I've really wanted to cast on for kind of magical making and for setting intentions and for doing some witchy rituals. So I it popped into my head the other day. I was like, oh, that might be something that people would be excited to follow along to see the thought process behind these makes, to see the intention setting, and kind of how I do infuse some of my witchy practices with my making. So I will be creating another series here for YouTube. It's going to be called Magical Makings, and I am going to cast on a new project with y'all, explain what it'll be used for, and do some check-ins so you can see how I'm doing. The first project that I've chosen is not my design, it is someone else's, but I 
oh, I've been wanting to make it for so long and I can't wait to be wearing it to do different rituals. I have this very specific vision in mind for it and it is a longer project. I know that this is not going to be something that I finish this month probably even the next month. I, I think it would be cool to get it done by the summer solstice, but if I don't, that's totally fine. Stay tuned sometime next week or the following, I am going to cast that on with you all. And um, yeah, it'll be the magical making series. The next whip, <laughs> this is something I started in January <laughs> and I kind of put it away. And I think one of these episodes, I actually meant to talk about it and I just totally forgot. And when I posted the video, I was like, I forgot to mention this whip. It has been hibernating because I have been in a little pickle trying to decide if I want to continue with how it's going or if I want to frog and do the same thing, but just with a smaller needle size. This is my Cocoa Beach Blanket Wrap. It was intended to be my first design for 2024, which is not happening. As we got closer and closer to spring, I just decided it would be a little bit out of season and a little bit not really what I wanted to be working on anymore. So I am going to take my time working on this and it's going to become um, something that I put out a tester call for in the fall and hopefully it can release um, sometime just before winter. But I wanted to show y'all the beautiful chevron texture. This shawl is so much fun. There are no increases or decreases. Everything is done with knits and pearls. That's it. That's it. And I am not a chart person. I'm going to attempt to include a chart for this design. But honestly, I... I, I have to read it. So all of the instructions will be written out. Some of you are probably like, yay, thank God. I'm also not a chart girl. But if you are a chart person, I'm doing this for you. I've actually been holding it up wrong the whole time. <laughs> the only way to really tell what the right side and the wrong side is for this particular design is to look where the color changes are because the stitch of the chevrons is reversible which is really cool. But this is the right side of the pattern. And I just love how these chevrons have turned out. And I am liking the striping. I'm starting to get into the next row of chevrons. But I was a little worried that maybe the fabric I was creating was too airy. Maybe I wanted it denser, but I've decided no. Light and airy is actually what we're going for even with a bulky weight yarn. One of the other amazing things about this, if you like stitch markers or knit jewelry, it's going to feel like your whole whip is just full of fun stitch markers and fun jewelry. Um, you will not have to put <laughs> this many stitch markers in, but if you really want a truly mindless whip, having these stitch markers for every to mark the repeats makes it so easy and so mindless. This has been bringing me a lot of joy. I've started it over twice now and thought about frogging it thrice. I'm going to keep going. I think that the fabric is great. Um, I like how the stitch markers are set up. I think that the length of the shawl is going to be really good. I have a fun idea for making it like not a cape, but like, I don't know. I'll show y'all whenever we get there. But I think it's gonna be a really, a really fun design. And um, there's a little bit of color work in the sense that you'll just be switching colors for certain sections, kind of like color blocking. This is something you'll, I'll try to check in with, maybe not every episode of Show Us Your Knits, but um, I will give you guys some progress updates on this. And the only other whip that I'll be working on is figuring out that Les Olas crochet set. Um, once I get through this week and the following, there are some business things that I want to attend to um, while still making sure to prioritize my mental health. Um, I will be diving deep into what the fuck went wrong with that skirt, how to fix it, and refilming that tutorial so that I can get a tester call out and hopefully have that tutorial out in June or July of this year so that if you want to make a Les Olas crochet set, you can. Well, we made it, y'all. 
those are my finished objects and my current works in progress and about to be works in progress for the month of April wrapping up for March. Definitely more whips than last month, right? I I have big plans for the month of April, but I'm trying to learn from my mistakes and release some of these old habits that I really cling to and maybe work on some of these more slowly and give myself more grace for getting things done. So honestly, next month on our Show Us Your Knits, I'm not really sure what's going to be finished. I hope something, but if not, that's totally okay. I will just still have a lot of whips to show y'all and I'll be able to show you the progress that I've made so far. Thank you so, so much for watching y'all. I have so much fun acting like a five-year-old at show and tell letting y'all see what I've been working on. Um, please feel free to let me know what you're working on, if any of these projects really speak to you, what you're excited about seeing the progress on next. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you can. Um, if not, I'm still glad that you're here hanging out with me. I hope you had a good time. I sure did. Thanks again for watching y'all and have a wonderful day. Cheers.